Це кожен дім, кожна вулиця, можна сказати, облетіна нашою кров'ю. Наша артилерія ну, не справляється подавити їхню, тобто контрартилерійські дії. Дачому не є типу, ефективні, так як у нас нехватка іменно боєприпасів, нехватка професійних дронів, які б могли проводити розвідку, де стоїть їхня техніка, де стоїть їхня арта. Тобто вони себе чувствують тут чомусь без наказу. Місяць, тут більше трохи місяця. Є втрати, ну, значні втрати. Люди на позиціях нехватка людей, то тобто недосипання, холод, дощ, то тобто погода от, міняється, постійні обстріли, постійні штурми піхоти, то тобто все на грані. Ну, подавлені. Можна сказати, в чомусь подавлені, бо не відчувається іменно підтримка. Можна сказати, артилерії наш, тобто все, все опирається у розходник, скажімо так, ЗСУ, це піхота. So Ukraine has gotten a much needed surge in media attention since the Israeli-Palestinian war after the US House of Representatives recently finally approved a 60 million aid package to Ukraine. Now the entire package is about 95 billion dollars but the rest is to go to Israel and Taiwan. But for the purposes of this video I am going to focus on the aid going to Ukraine. So the bill then goes on to the Senate where it is expected to be passed by this coming Tuesday morning. Now of course, as would be anticipated, there's a lot of jubilation in the pro-Ukrainian camp, both on the internet and in Ukraine. But again, I think that that jubilation may turn out to ring quite hollow. Now some might say I got it wrong in my last video, where I was of the opinion that the US was done with Ukraine when they sent the last aid package in December of last year. And that any statements of future aid from the West was really an attempt just to boost the Ukrainian army's morale so that the Ukrainian army doesn't collapse out of a lack of willpower during this year's US elections which are scarred for November of this year than actually being any real genuine attempt to send sufficient equipment and arms to Ukraine to achieve victory or let alone even stave off a defeat. But I am still holding on to my position because when we look a bit deeper to see what is being sent to Ukraine in this 60 billion dollar package and when it's likely to arise, I think some serious questions arise in my mind and should arise in the pro-Ukrainian camp's mind. So let's get into it. So here's a breakdown of the aid package by The Guardian. Of the $60.7 billion sent to Ukraine, $23 billion is for US to replenish its military stockpiles, opening the door to future military transfers to Ukraine. So you see that? Permit me to translate this for you. This means that 23 billion is really for America. Benefits America and not Ukraine. That's a simple way to put it. That money is to replenish US stockpiles and not to send weapons to the front line of Ukraine. So gentlemen, we can cancel that 23 billion out of the 60 billion. So the next 11 billion is to fund the current US military operations in the region. Again, that is not weapons and equipment to be sent to Ukraine. Now admittedly this article is rather vague about this point, but that money is to go to either US troops or their allies in the region of Ukraine and not directly to Ukraine's front line. That's the point to take. So we can cross that out as well. Then we have another 8 billion for non-military assistance to Ukraine. So that's salaries and pensions and whatever else, not helping the frontline situation. So what we are left with, gentlemen, is about 14 billion. And that goes to, well, let me quote this here, the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative in which the Pentagon buys advanced new weapon systems for the Ukrainian military directly from US defense contractors. Let's read that again because it, come, it becomes important when I read some later contradictory articles. So to summarize, out of the 60 billion for Ukraine, only 14 billion is in military aid that will be sent to help them on the front lines of East Ukraine. And that vital aid comes 100% from Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, which does not involve drawing down from the stockpiles, but from giving U.S. defense contractors, new contracts and jobs to procure these weapons to send to Ukraine. So I have several questions about this, but my first issue is this. Ukraine has made it clear 
But what they need most is artillery and air defense. President Biden has already admitted sometime last year that the U.S. was out of artillery ammunition. Why now? We've run out of ammunition. And let me give you some statistics here. CNN reported on the 11th of March this year that it's not just a problem of insufficient artillery shells available to send to Ukraine, but it's more worrying, I would say, insufficient production capacity in the West. CNN admitted that Russia is on track to produce nearly three times more artillery munitions than US and Europe. Not just US alone, mind you, but both the US and Europe. And here are some more statistics. Russia produced 250,000 shells per month and the US military set a future goal to produce 100,000 a month by 2025, which, as CNN correctly stated, is still less than half the Russian monthly output. What CNN failed to reveal is what is the current capacity in the US right now. Gentlemen, we are now in April of 2024. That means seven to eight months left in this year. And the summer of 2024 is when Russia is poised to launch a massive offensive. Now we don't know whether, and I already stated, I have serious doubts whether Ukraine's army could even make it intact to 2025. What is the importance of artillery? Artillery is the god of all land wars. Russia alone is outproducing the US and Europe, so the entire Western alliances by three times. And then Russia's allies are adding to Russia's overwhelming firepower. CNN said that Russian factories are running 24-7 and that Iran sent at least 300,000 shells last year and probably more than that, while North Korea provided 6,700 containers carrying millions of shells. So I am unclear as to how this $14 billion package, which goes to US defense contractors so that they can get more jobs and more contracts to provide more weapons, sorry, to buy more weapons and then send those weapons to Ukraine is going to solve this dire equation of low artillery shells for the Ukrainian army. Again, this sounds more like a morale boost package than anything else. Now permit me to make another comparison. And this comes from an article that I read in the Council of Foreign Relations some time ago. Look at this chart right here. This represents the total aid that the United States has sent to Ukraine from January of 2022 until January of this year. So that's two years of aid. A total 74.3 billion with 46.3 billion in military aid. And here is the interesting part. Out of that 46.3 billion in military aid assistance, 23.5 billion was in weapons and equipment acquired from, and I quote, US Defense Department stocks provided through presidential drawdowns. Gentlemen, go back to the Guardian article. That is no longer available. The Guardian indicated that the 14 billion is coming from this figure right here, Security Assistance Initiative. And it's even less than what the US sent under that same heading for the past two years. So let me sum it up, 46.3 billion sent from the US alone in military aid so far for two years, and Ukraine couldn't beat or push the Russian army out of Ukraine. When, mind you, the Russian army was far smaller, less than 200,000 troops. Now it's gone past 700,000 troops from the latest report. Now the US is sending, firstly, less than half that number in aid. So if I do my calculations correct, 14 billion is around 30% of the 46.3 billion sent in military aid before. And worse than that, it's not from presidential drawdowns, but from security assistance package, which means US defense contractors get the money and have to go out and find and procure these weapons to send to Ukraine. Now I want to be fair, some officials, unnamed officials, have said that they can guarantee that these weapons will come to Ukraine rather quickly. And this is where I suppose we will have to wait and see, and see if this is just rhetoric as I suspect or if these are genuine assurances from the US. But let's take a look at this article from Voice of America. And they start off with a very bold statement that the Pentagon could get these weapons moving to Ukraine within days once Congress passes the bill. And here's the reason, because it has a network of storage sites in the US and Europe that hold ammunition and air defense components that Kiev needs. But let's put a pause here. Notice the words they use. It does not say they have artillery ammunition. It states vaguely it has ammunition and air defense components that Ukraine needs. Now, like I said earlier, the US and Europe do not have the production capacity or munitions on hand to replenish 
Ukraine's dire shortage of artillery, which um, I, I might be guessing here, but I believe it contributes to somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of the deaths on the battlefield in Ukraine. And here's my second point. Hasn't the West been preaching over and over that if we don't stop Russia in Ukraine, that Russia is coming for all of Europe next? I would say 80 percent, though, of the money for Ukraine does go into our defense industrial base. And it goes into uh, modernizing and replenishing our stockpiles in the United States. And it's going to create jobs in the United States. Any expert you talk to, every military, Jack, General Jack Keane to Mike Pompeo, will tell you there's a national security interest here. Because if Ukraine falls, then, then Moldova is going to fall, then Georgia, then the Baltics are at stake. And you're looking at parallels to 1939 all over again. And nowhere has anyone said that this aid is going to stop Russia and Ukraine or defeat the, the Russian army. In fact, at best, if this aid does even arrive on time, which is doubtful, it would only serve to delay Ukraine's defeat because, let's be real, Ukraine faces an even more dire manpower shortage than ammunition not shortage, which cannot be solved by any amount of US or Western money. So I say, if, as you in the West claim, Russia is coming for Europe next, then why would you take weapons away from your European stockpiles and give it to a lost cause in Ukraine if you expect that Russia may be attacking European allies next? Doesn't that seem a bit counterintuitive? It certainly seems so to me. And if Ukraine can't win and you expect the war to expand to Europe, why would you further diminish your European stockpiles to send into a black hole of corruption in Ukraine? Okay, so let's get back to the articles. Now remember when I differentiated presidential drawdowns from security assistance and that the Guardian confirmed that the, the uh, 40 bil 14 billion in direct aid to Ukraine comes only from security assistance. Remember that. Now, pause. Read this section of the, the Voice of America article here. How quickly can the US move weapons? And it speaks only of presidential drawdowns. And this is important. It says, in the past, we have seen weapons transferred via presidential drawdowns arrive in days. But that's not what is happening with this aid package. So to me, this section is totally inapplicable to Ukraine's current situation. Drawdown stocks are pulled from bases or storage facilities in the US and from European sites. Yes, I accept that, but again, that's if they are doing presidential drawdowns, which The Guardian says is not they're doing security assistance initiative. So this is where my confusion lies. And I have another concern. There's very little analysis on the security assistance initiative package, save for the fact that it is different from a presidential drawdown. So the article goes on to talk about um, US storage, where they admit that US stockpiles on the 155 millimeter artillery shells is low and thus they are shipping back rounds that they originally sent to South Korea. Then they say here that, that the US could send certain munitions almost immediately like the 155 millimeter rounds. So I am now even more confused. So is this being sent as part of the security assistance initiative or is, it, or is this a drawdown package? And again, how much artillery rounds can the U.S. send if, if, if all of the Western stockpiles are low? Well, to be honest, and I know I've said this 10 times, but I want to save some room for error here. I am not a military man, so I would appreciate if any one of my viewers with some military expertise can explain how this assistance will work through the Security Assistance Initiative as opposed to presidential drawdowns. But to me, the articles clearly state that security assistance means giving money to U.S. defense contractors to build or procure weapons to send to Ukraine. And it does not mean taking from U.S. or European stockpiles. So this Voice of America article, to me, seems a bit misleading or contradictory. And if I am correct, then it's just another attempt at empty rhetoric or inflated promises solely to boost Ukrainian morale about this war. And this conclusion leads me to, as of now, remain steadfast in my early opinion that any statements of aid to Ukraine is just another morale booster rather than any substantive assistance to change the battlefield situation on the front lines of East Ukraine. $14 billion in assistance is not a lot, especially when you have to replace air defense systems, which are extremely expensive. 
Just take a look at what recently happened in Israel. One day of defending 15-year-old Iranian missiles and drones cost the West 1.3 billion US dollars. And I would say most of that 14 billion in aid will be spent building new air defense systems for Ukraine, leaving very little for other weapons and munitions like artillery cells. And in this CNN article, there's a section entitled Great Moral Booster, where Ukrainian army servicemen speak on how the recent House of Representatives vote for aid has provided a much needed moral boost. This interviewee said, when we feel support from the outside, it motivates us. After all, the military cannot fight with sticks and arrows. And another Ukrainian serviceman who was interviewed made it clear that what Ukraine really needs is artillery shells because they have an artillery shell hunger. And another identified air defense and artillery as Ukraine's top priorities. So gentlemen, I say, despite Voice of America's articles of grand promises from unnamed, unidentified U.S. officials, I have a lot of doubt that, one, the U.S. and Europe can send anywhere close to the sufficient amount of artillery needed to really help Ukraine in this battle. That's first. Two, that this $14 billion aid from the Security Assistance Initiative and not the presidential drawdowns will arrive in time to save Ukraine from an impending defeat this summer. And three, that 14 billion is enough to far less attain victory, but even just to help Ukraine last to 2025, given the fact that 46 billion was sent for the last two years against a smaller Russian army. But we shall see, my friends. We shall very soon see. Uh, virtually all of the supplemental uh, will be invested in the United States, in defense production, in our own defense industrial base. And that means good jobs in the United States.